What is going on guys? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. As you know, if you've been following, I've been exploring monochromatic imaging. And this is kind of a new territory for me. Not kind of, this is this is new territory for me, but I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it and a lot of success with it already. Recently, I came across another astrophotographer on Twitter named Brian Toops. Brian, if you're watching this, I hope I'm not butchering your last name. Brian has some amazing work and he does some really interesting color palette choices that I haven't seen before. Um, and it really inspired me to want to explore that. So I reached out to Brian and he was kind enough to kind of give me a brief overview rundown of how he does his some of his color palettes in Photoshop. So I'm going to attempt to replicate, at least to some degree, the method he uses in Photoshop for different color palettes using narrowband imaging. He usually does use RGB data, but it can be done both ways, either way. So that's what we're gonna be exploring today. We're gonna to be looking at an OSH palette, which new, new to me, but I'm really digging the results I got from it. And you can really use really pretty much any myriad of colors you want to bring out the nebula detail. You're gonna to wanna to use complementary colors, but that's something we'll talk about later. Let's go back inside here. Let's jump on the computer and let's play around with some different color palettes for narrowband imaging. Alright, so now we're going to start with the bottom layer. So we're going to unclick the other layers and we're going to start with our HA layer on the bottom. And we're going to pull up Hue Saturation, Control U, check the Colorize box, and here's where you can play around with the hue and saturation you want this particular data layer to be. I did in, you know, recently a purple rendition of this. I thought it came out really nice. Um, and you can adjust the hue and saturation to, to your liking here. Let's, for this demonstration, let's go with kind of like the bluish teal look. Let's see what that looks like. Let's crank up the saturation and adjust the lightness to taste. And I think right about there looks good to me. All right, so we're gonna hit okay on that layer for now. Now let's go to the next layer up. And you notice on this, the HA layer I left as normal, but the layers on top will do is either lighten, uh, and I'll show you some different examples of how that affects it. Here's lighten, this is screen, color dodge, linear dodge, lighter color. Kind of like the effect of lighter color. You can do soft light too for more dramatic look and you can adjust that layer accordingly so if we go with soft light you can lower the opacity to adjust the strength of that layer but let's go let's go with either lighten let's see lighten or lighter color let's go with lighten on that layer there and pull up the control u panel and same thing here, hit colorize, and we can switch the hue of the S2 data. Got to really crank up that saturation for it to show through, but you're going to want to pick something complementary to the teal. You can refer to a color wheel chart for that, but um, let's adjust the lightness. Ooh, too much too dark right about just above neutral I like that's a little bit lighter than that hue there kind of tones down that all right now let's go to the next layer and we're gonna do this one 
is either lighten. Let's go with lighten. And same thing here, control U. There's not a lot of nebula data, really, on this particular layer, so I don't think we're gonna see a huge change in hue or saturation of the nebula itself, yeah. So we can just leave that one alone. In a different situation where if you had a lot more data in that layer, you would see a, a different effect, of course. So at this point, let's go back to our bottom layer, our HA layer, and let's pull up some levels, do some levels adjustments. So let's go to the red channel. That looks like that's pretty much where it needs to be. Go to a two on that one. Green. So bring this slider back over on the green, and then we'll do the same on the blue. But we don't want to clip the colors in the background. All right, same thing here. Let's check the levels on the next layer. R, G, and then of course B is not much to move on the blue there. And then lastly, on the top layer. Oh, wrong one. Control L to bring up the levels. And let's check each channel there. I don't think there's going to be much movement here. Yeah. There's just not much data there, guys, other than the star color for that layer. Honestly, probably could have done without it. All right, there's some lingering green here. Let's pull that out using a plugin called Asta La Vista Green. And we'll just do a, a week. Let's undo that. Let's try that again. Let's do it on this layer. Asta La Vista Green. Deep Sky Colors. Here we go. All right, that pulls out some of that green. All right, let's 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 stamp this forward. Alt, Control, Shift, E. And let's pull up the levels in this particular document. Let's check our levels again. We don't want to clip the data. We just want to get it to where we're moving all the good data all the way to the left. And then the blue, there we go, right about there. There's still a little residual green in the background. So let's stamp this forward, Alt, Control, Shift, E again. Stamp that layer forward and let's run that Asta La Vista green weak setting one more time. Boom, there we go. And there you go. I mean, this is this was a quick run through, but you know, it's, a, it's an interesting, unique way to colorize your data you know when we're working with mono data your data is being mapped to certain channels anyway to bring out the the most detail possible in the nebula right i mean that's the end goal with like an sho palette that they're using complementary colors and in this particular situation where the the data set i have is just primarily ha I and mean, there was a little bit of sulfur too in there but not much for you to really see a huge difference i love using camera raw filter so improving contrast and in camera raw filter we can come in here and we can you know of course do some noise reduction we can also I love this color grading wheel. Check this out. Really kind of bring up the vibrance in that nebula. The midtones, the shadows, and the highlights. Let's go to the shadows. You can careful that you might clip some data though with that one. And then the highlights. Just make them pop a little bit more. Under basic, we've also got, you know, you can do a little vibrance boost. I don't think it needs a whole lot. And clarity, of course, helps boost some of that nebula detail. Now, I would probably, and that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm, that's that's a neat color palette. I think it's neat. It's cool looking. There's some, you know, some green here we could easily pull out. We can make a mask and uh, color sample that area and pull that out, no problem, and just have that nice and, and uniform for the background. 
But that's really about it. Um, I'm, I really look forward to doing this with some more of my monochromatic work when I have some data where I've, you've got some strong O3 data, strong HA and S2, so you can really get some nice color, layering of color in here. But this was an example using the blue, using this method. I guess this was more of like an OSH pa uh, palette. You can do um, OHS palette. You can really kind of do it any way you want. Brian recommends putting your strongest data layer on the bottom, which in this case for me was the HA, which is why I had that on my bottom layer. This is kind of an introductory into this kind of editing, and I'm going to continue to play around with this, and as I discover uh, some additional techniques that could help bring out that nebula detail in a unique way, I'll be sure to post a video on it. And guys, if, if you're not already, follow me on Twitter. I've got a Twitter. It's Valent0879. I'm also on TikTok, but of course primarily on YouTube. And as always, keep on looking up, keep on seeking, and until next time, clear skies.